continuing my series Pushing the Envelope with Premiere Pro, this time we're going to look at how to lay out a sequence in preparation for editing. The first step is the sequence settings. The frame rate should match the rate you shot at, unless you shot at twice the delivery rate, like 60p for 30p delivery. If you're going to have 60p outputs as well, then you should edit at 60p. But in the case of my last action movie, they shot at 48 frames per second, but all the editing and outputs were 24p, so no need to edit or process at 48p. Resolution can be a bit more complicated. Normally you want to edit at the resolution of your highest quality deliverable, but if you have different deliverables with aspect ratios that vary significantly, you will probably be best served by editing in sequences at the same resolution as your source footage. We will look more closely at some of these specifics in the next episode, which explores aspect ratios in more detail. Once the frame rate and aspect ratio are set, the other main decision is master audio track type. If you're mixing surround audio in Premiere, obviously you want to choose 5.1. If you're outputting multiple channels to a board, you will want multi-channel, and most other cases will do best set to stereo. The tracks themselves should be dictated by your source material, but usually a bunch of mono tracks and a couple stereo tracks for music. You can name your tracks, which I recommend, usually starting with Dialog 1, 2, etc., and then FX 1, 2, etc., followed by Music 1, 2, etc. Video tracks are much simpler because they're all the same, but labeling them is helpful as well. By default, the track name is not visible at the smallest settings, but that can be customized. Dragging the V1 item next to the eyeball, we find that no matter how small we make our tracks, the title is still visible. The same can be done for audio, A1 being the thing that needs to be left on the first line. You'll notice that the mono tracks have a single speaker icon here, and the standard tracks do not. For most consistent results, you want to keep your mono audio files on a mono track and your stereo files on a standard track. On a larger and more complex project, you'll have many more tracks. In this case, I have 10 tracks of mono dialogue, one track of stereo dialogue, and I have two tracks of mono effects, followed by nine more tracks of stereo effects, followed by two stereo tracks of music. On the visual side, there's a lot of temp comps, so I have my backgrounds behind the green screens on the lowest layer, my main footage that I'm copying my characters from in this main layer. Video 3 is just extra layers on top of that followed by my temp VFX. Then I have a pre-render layer for a better playback performance, followed by a labels layer where every shot has its own title, labeling it with the correct information that we need for its visual effects. Then we have three layers of subtitles and then a regular titles level as well for our motion graphics. On top of the titles, I may have mats for my primary deliverables as well as text security burn-ins that I can enable for certain preview exports. This allows me to easily export whatever variations I need like textless outputs, watermark previews, and things like that. If we were to use Premiere's built-in render engine, it would render the entire thing, including the titles, and every time we decided to try and change the title, it would want to re-render the effect underneath, and that would sort of defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do. In this particular case, we're gonna add a helicopter here, so I just got those shots. I am going to turn them on, but we don't see them below the pre-render layer. So I have to cut the pre-render layer and roll it back, and now we will see the layer underneath as well as the layer above that. So there's our new helicopter. Um, as I keep making changes to other shots, I'll continue cutting away pieces of this green pre-render, and once this pre-render is totally chewed full of holes, I will export and make a new one. To make a new render layer, we would just turn off the titles, we would set our in and our out as needed, export that file, and then bring it back in and lay it in over top of the previous render layer. Eventually, these sequences will just be the starting points for more complex workflows that we will explore in the next few episodes. For more detailed info, check out techwithmikefirst.com.